live from the Studio Paint Bar at 80 Fort. It's Studio Night Live! And now, your host, Pablo Dawson! of Studio Night Live! Yeah. We are happy to have you with us here today. Um, I am your host, Pablo Dawson. I am brought to you by Jameson Irish Whiskey. Wait, we got Jameson as a sponsor? No, I just was brought to you by Jameson Irish Whiskey. Yeah. Uh, Jameson. That's right. Her name is Jameson. Yeah. Yeah, I've just had a lot of Jameson Irish Whiskey, that's all. But uh, why not? It's taste. That's why? why. Not. That's We're right. Taste, that's why, in case anyone from Jameson is listening. Yeah. We're happy to be here. We got Modern Song Media. How about a hand for them? And that's right. And you can pick it up right here at the Studio Paint Bar or at various locations around the city. I am disappointed that you didn't bring that employee of yours who's a dummy. Ted? Ted. Yes, Ted. He's got a name. Okay, yes, Ted. Sorry. He's very useful. He is useful. He's an actual dummy, though. You gotta, you gotta check it out on Modern Mississauga's uh, social media. You can find them there. So, guys, this is Championship Edition, isn't Woo! it? That's right. Everybody's so excited about Liverpool winning the European Champions League. That's really, that's really cool. I love it. Yeah, that's right. Go Reds. Yeah. Now I'm a Spurs fan myself, but uh, you know the thing is, is that um, I'm gonna obviously be talking about the Championship that everyone. Uh, in Canada actually cares about, that's right, the Stanley Cup, yeah. okay? Uh, we all care about the Stanley Cup, right? How about those St. Louis Blues, right? No Blues fans, really? How about fans of Laura Branigan? Do any of you know who that is, anyway? That's how St. Louis won the title, because they actually used Gloria, this song right here, as their victory song. Who remembers this? Gloria, anybody? Hey, guys. We're on a show. You can't raise your hands. The people there get clapped. You gotta clap. So yeah, I love this song from my childhood. So after hearing all this, Leafs fans were like, you know what, guys? Toronto Maple Leafs? We need to petition you. We need our own song. So they started, you know, sending emails uh, into the Leafs. And it was surprising because the Leafs actually came back and go, uh, we actually have a song. It's called I Had a Bad Day by Daniel Cotter. Okay. <laughs> So they came up with some other suggestions. I have these suggestions right here. They said, how about I believe I can fly? I was like, oh, wait, that's R. Kelly. I don't know about that. I don't think that's the best idea. I don't know who R. Kelly is, but uh, in a bit of trouble, isn't he? Yeah. Um, the Flyers liked it, but that's about it. R. Kelly says, you know, he doesn't see a lot wrong with a little bit of bump and grind, but I guess he'll find that out later on if no one jumps in going on. <laughs> So the next suggestion to the Leafs for a theme song, a victory song, was uh, Wanna Be Starting Something by Michael Jackson. <laughs> you know, you've heard this? Yeah. You know, everybody knows that lyric. You know, it's, uh, it's that awesome beat that Will Smith used, Rihanna used. Mama say, mama sa, mama kusa, right? Right? Yeah, you guys like that, right? Yeah. Here's the problem with that lyric. The actual words, according to the Thriller album, is, I'm going to tell you one more time, I'm not going to stop. Which has not aged well, okay? <laughs> if we remember the uh, news about Michael Jackson. But people miss your lyrics all the time, don't they? People miss your lyrics all the time. Take Madonna's hit, La Isla Bonita. Everybody know that song, La Isla Bonita, right? Man, I thought it was speaking to me. It turned out it wasn't, you know. It was like, last night I dreamt of some bagels. 
And if you know my impressive physique, you know I love bagels. <laughs> <laughs> Salmon, cream cheese, Essa bagels. We are really gonna try hard for a sponsor, aren't we? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Essa bagels in New York City. If anybody's ever tried those, those are good. But yeah, um, obviously, people, I want to talk about the rapture. Okay, that's right. The rapture that hit Golden State. Although I've noticed some people do pronounce it like that. The raptures, you know. They certainly gave it to Golden State now, didn't they? Didn't they? But you know what, Studio Night Live being a great show, you know, I actually spoke to Kawhi Leonard this morning. I said, Kawhi, what an amazing season, right? You managed to win the NBA title. You are now NBA Finals MVP. You did all of this and no one expected it. Kawhi, how on earth does it feel to be a champion and on top of the world? And his answer was, Thought it was uh, very cool uh, that uh, the championship, and uh, I just got to give credit to my uh, teammates. And everything. So yeah, Kawhi was very excited. You know, we hope to have him on the show sometime. So, and the other thing is, is that I just found out this is actually breaking news. So I got to read this to you. Our beloved um, premier, Doug Ford, is actually going to be at work Monday. He's going to be out there working for you on Monday. Nobody else is going to be at work, mind you, because they're all going to be at the Raptors Championship Parade. That's right. But Doug Ford will be in his office drinking bucket beer because he says, and I quote, parades are no places for politicians. <laughs> Which to me was like that and cutting ribbons and kissing babies was I thought was the point of politicians, but what do I know? But yeah, Doug Ford says he's going to be out there drinking his bucket beer, but uh, that's okay. Uh, Kawhi said, oh, you weren't invited anyway, so uh, <laughs> that's how Kawhi felt about that. Another place that uh, Ford probably shouldn't have been invited is the Pride Parade. It's going to be happening at the end of the month. You know, but they're going to go on without him, right? It is Pride Month, okay? We're here in June. It's Pride Month. It's awesome. So because it's Pride Month, of course, the city of Boston, at least a few Bostonians, decided it would be a great idea to hold, and I quote, a straight pride parade because that's what was needed to me I thought a straight pride parade was what the Raptors fans had the next day at work if they were able to be upright and they were straight you know that, that's what it was the problem with straight pride parades is that they can only go down one street you know it's like they, they, they don't have the ability to bend you know and then not really much fun as a parade right and why does Boston need a straight pride parade I mean that's a wicked stupid idea to take something out of you know their book the fact is, is that if there's any city that could use a straight pride parade, it's the Bay Area, San Francisco and Oakland. And you know why? Because they're not getting no basketball parade now, are they? <laughs> they're not getting a basketball parade, that's for sure. One of the uh, things during Pride Month, you get to learn about different identities, and I got to learn about pansexuality, and I gotta tell you, I love this idea. Pansexuality, it's where you are attracted to the person as opposed to the gender, and I think that's a fabulous idea, because let's face it, there are some people we can all agree that we're attracted to, like Chris Hemsworth, man, I'm not telling you. Chris Hemsworth, oh man. Man in Black International, now in theaters. Please go <laughs> check it out. But, um, you know, when I look at Chris Hemsworth, but the one thought that comes into my head is that I don't think there's a question whether I'm attracted to Chris Hemsworth. I think the better question is, why on earth would Chris Hemsworth be attracted to me? Oh, yeah. the hair. That's, it's, that's, the it, hair. It's, it's the hair, I know, I love it. I use Pantene, by the way. Pantene, yes, we're really hoping for that sponsorship. <laughs> so I told this Chris Hemsworth story to a friend of mine. He's like, oh wait, so are you coming out? I said, coming out? I'm 43 years old, what am I gonna do? Go up to my elderly father and explain this? I mean, he has no idea what's going on anyway. And you know, a lot of people criticize baby boomers, and no offense to any in the audience, but uh, there is a lot to criticize. But having said that, you cannot criticize them based on this. Because according to Facebook, they're all very open people. Every baby boomer's profile who's a senior citizen now, they all check off that they're interested in both men and women. It's hilarious. And when I ask them about it, they're like, yeah, I like talking to men, I like talking to women too. I'm like, it's not exactly what that means. But you know, no, that's okay, it's okay. Yeah, I do have um, you know uh, elderly parents at home. Um, they are seniors, but they have the mind of teenagers, so they're teenagers. That's, uh, that's how it has been. Um, but you know what? If people say, well, do you take care of them because it's part of your culture? I'm like, no, I take care of them because I don't know where else they would go. I don't know who else would have them, to be honest with you. Um, but you do have to, um, very subtle. No, it's live. 
Yeah, she's giving me a book is what she's doing. I will leave you with one, one more thought here, okay? And that is that I think it is a good idea. You guys can clap if you agree with me. We should experience other cultures. Is that right? We should experience other cultures. Yeah. There is this one culture that's gotten a bit of a bad rap lately, and um, you know, I know that a lot of people find themselves they're uncomfortable around them, and some of the extremists in their culture they try and impose, you know, sort of their ways on other people. Um, I'm talking, of course, about vegans. You know, and uh, the other day I found myself actually going to a vegan restaurant by choice, and I'll tell you why. Because I went to A and W. We want that sponsorship, people. A and W. So A and W. We went to and um, had that Beyond Meat burger. Well, I gotta tell you, it was awesome. And I was like, then I found out, of course, it was cooked on the same grill as all the rest of the meat. So I mean, for me, I think the secret ingredient in Beyond Meat was meat. But uh, I went to a vegan restaurant. I had the Beyond Meat burger. Again, we want that sponsorship. Beyond Meat. That's where it's at. Um, and it was still very, very good. So I would encourage you to try that. And I'll leave you with this one question. It's a vegetable. It's a vegetarian. Why isn't it a vegetarian? Why is it vegan? Is that branding? How does that work? You know, it, well, why, why is it? It's vegetable, it's vegetarian, it should be vegan. Okay, so be kind to your vegans out there. They're a very misunderstood culture.